When I was a kid of about six years old, my family took me one day to a Hollywood video store. They had games there and I decided to pick up good old Star Fox Adventures. Fast forward to current year and... Well, look at me now. I've had ties with furry games since I was a young child, not only with Star Fox Adventures, but also Pokemon, especially the Mystery Dungeon furry isekai games, and even as an elder child with games like Paladins. So I decided to go ahead and talk about three furry games I've discovered over time. You may have heard of them, you may not have, but I'm here to play through these games and tell you what my personal thoughts on them are to hopefully develop some interest in them. Let me set some ground rules for this video, since if there were none, any game, as long as it has an anthro in it, would be a viable pick. Number one, no visual novels. I know most furry games tend to be visual novels. Heck, even Nekojishi, a game I actually like, is a visual novel. But in general, I don't like visual novels. And they probably make this video less fun to watch overall. Two, no p games. Unfortunately, seeing as I'm on YouTube and age restrictions are a death sentence for channels big and small, but mostly small, let's be honest, I will not be tempting fate by playing anything 18 plus. But suggestive content is completely fine. Three, nothing already too popular. I didn't have a better way of wording it, but basically anything widely accepted outside of the furry community, such as Undertale, Dust and Elysian Tale, and Mad Rat Dead are already fairly well known about as well as two of the three of these videos, already having videos on my channel about them, Mad Rat Dead if you want a short little watch, and Undertale if you need some noise for, I don't know, three hours? Also, if you're watching this, I know there's a lot of weird content in at least one of these games, but please do not seek out and harass the devs of any of these games. We're here to have fun and spotlight the creative endeavors of some indie c games. I messed that up. We're here to have fun and spotlight the creative endeavors of some indie games that otherwise don't get the attention they probably deserve. So please be nice and have some fun. And with all that out of the way, let's get things started. Beaches. They're quite dirty, and it's a noble job to clean them up. The only problem is, I live in the middle of nowhere, Texas, with no beaches. So how do I get the authentic beach cleaning experience while also butt bouncing off random people doing the same thing as me to get a decent dime? Rusty Seas is a game from Don't Feed the Wolf, a small indie company created by furry artist Eiji. Eiji? Eiji? I don't actually know how to say it. I hope I'm saying it right by saying Eiji, because that's how I say it normally. You play as Mirig, a slightly heavyset wolf who works at a diner and eats burgers while doing anything for money. Anything. Including helping an odd green bird with cleaning up beaches for mysterious scrap, littering it, and fending off random people doing the same thing with your overwhelming thickness. The game is simple. It's a beat-em-up where your primary weapon is your ass. Hit enemies enough with it and you will daze them. While dazed, you can pick up enemies and throw them into the sea, since most of them canonically, cannot swim. And you can charge them cash for the rescue later. While you have enemies attacking you, you do need to keep an eye out for salvage, since that is your primary goal. You only have a limited time to gather all the salvage before the next wave of enemies and scrap arrives. The game is simple, but actually really fun. I, I found myself going for 100% across all levels and had a blast in doing so. There's also boss stages that I won't really spoil because some of them are really fun and I really want you to go play this game. I mean, the game isn't out yet, but it does have a demo on Steam, itch.io, and even the dev's website. And the game has reached its Kickstarter goal, which is a shame because I want to give you my money. I just want the Awoo's crop top shirt. That's it. There are a few concerns I do have going forward. Firstly is the fact I feel the game may get repetitive if there aren't enough new mechanics added into the game. Adding pool floaties onto characters to prevent them from being defeated was a cute idea, but that instead caused me to focus more on gathering scrap than defeating enemies. Maybe having a way to pop the floaties would make the encounter more interesting. Items can be a bit overpowered, and don't detract from your score at the end screen. Sure, you can only use it once per level, but for the amount of time it lasts, it feels too strong, especially since one is straight up invulnerability in a combat-focused game. 
I also fear for the state of unlockable outfits. I love dress up games. I play TF2 a lot right now, and I buy cosmetics not because they're expensive, but because they look good in an outfit I want. But the cosmetics in this game do give passive bonuses. Throwing scrap at enemies is actually the most powerful attack in the game. It has good range and does good damage while attacking multiple enemies at the same time. It's a safer version of your melee attack, meaning it's just a better melee. Which is why the red vest that makes those throws farther reaching is the most powerful outfit in the game. And I really don't know how many unique effects can be created for more outfits than the four already in the game and two promise to be added. Don't get me wrong, cosmetics are an excellent feature to have for rewards, but when those cosmetics give bonus effects, it makes itself more prone to metagaming and thus picking one outfit that is straight up better than the others. I also fear for future levels. I get this is only the first world, and so there won't be a lot of variance in enemy variety, but if every enemy is some variant of the Vixens, and heck, if every level is just a beach, I feel like it's also going to get boring. Maybe make more levels where water is less prevalent, or heck, maybe there's no water at all. While I do have some concerns for this game going forward, I honestly fully support this game. It's a fun playthrough, and 100%ing the demo only took me about an hour and a half. I would highly recommend it, and will totally play the game whenever it fully releases. And, again... I really just want that Awu shirt, like, come on, I, it, it looks so good. I've always been a big fan of card games. There's always been this itch in the back of my head that makes it so when a game is played using little paper cards, probably because I grew up on the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime and totally don't still have a card collecting problem, it makes me very happy. But I've had problems when it comes to playing said card games. I don't like magic, I just think it's boring. Yu-Gi-Oh is broken as fuck. And Pokemon... Eh. Card games have an inherent randomness, meaning competitive card gaming is about as enjoyable as Overwatch competitive, which is to say, not very. There's something to be said about winning games, but if winning means selling a piece of your soul plus every belonging you own to top the local scene, I'm sorry to say, you've got issues. So, cut out the randomness of card openings, cut out the hundred to thousand dollar card purchasing choices, and bring in the fun of board games and politics. Board game politics, not, like, IRL politics. Asados is a game from Studio Klondike, known mostly for their previous work on Nekojishi, a game that sadly didn't make it to this list because of being a visual novel, but a game that I genuinely enjoyed. Let's get this out of the way first. Yes, this is a card game with hot furry men in it. And don't get me wrong, I ain't complaining. The game looks fantastic, it's very clean and all the hot guys are super well drawn, stuff you can see quite easily. The thing you can't see very easily though is how you play the game. Because this game is a completely new thing I've never really seen before, but it's also quite easy once you play it a few times. Starting the game, you choose between two sides, light and dark, or in this case, Makari Hari's side and Mukaki's side. Shut up, I hear you snickering in the back there. The game is split into two modes, fun but competitive and fun with politics. Again, not the IRL stuff. Starting with the mode Takeover, this is a 1v1 game mode that pits you against one other player. You start with drawing your card, which will choose your side. During your turn, you have two phases, hero phase and a trial phase. You start at the trial phase, and a random card selected between red, blue, yellow, and green will appear. You will need to match this card with a card from your hand. Kind of like a game of Uno, but there's also spell cards that can do wacky things. Which... Actually, that's exactly like Uno now that I think of it. By playing a card, or multiple if you are on Mukaki's side, you gain energy. That energy can be used to summon heroes during the hero phase. Those heroes are your hot furry men. Heroes also have their own energy you can invest in. By having enough energy, they can activate their ability. Though some of them also have a passive ability. The other reason you may want to invest energy though is because an enemy can actually reduce the amount of energy counters a hero has on them to prevent them from using said ability, and if said hero has zero energy, and you spend one or more energy, you can steal it. This creates an interesting dynamic. This creates an interesting dynamic since the game field is constantly changing. The only thing is your god cards can 
only be used once per battle and only if they are on their original side. I also didn't confirm if their passive effect is disabled, if you don't have it, but I assume it is. And unique to TakeOver are two things, influence and disparity. Disparity is like an ultimate move, but right now it just doubles your influence effects. Influence acting a lot like the scales from Inscription. If the scales are tipped to your side too far, you lose. But the two sides tip the scales in different ways. I don't actually know in what ways, but usually light is playing defensively and dark is playing offensively. Okay, got all that? Great. Trust me, it's easier than it sounds. But let me introduce you to the actual most fun mode of the game, Conquest. Remove influence and disparity and instead have up to eight unique players all trying to get their own side to be the winner in this fight. Yes, I said up to eight players, that wasn't a typo. Each player is assigned to one team or the other, but if they fail their upkeep of energy during the trial and have no reserve energy, they swap sides. The goal of Makari Hari is to now activate five hero abilities in order for their team to win the game. Meanwhile, Mukaki's team wants to try and get every player on their side of the field. This creates tons of wacky moments that have entire teams swapping at a moment's notice, swapping heroes back and forth, trying to have more big men on their team, and even attempting to work together, when it benefits them most at least. Also, if you so choose, you can actually skip your upkeep to purposefully swap sides. Just thought that was a little bit fun. This game mode is a blast and seeing as much fun as I was having, I decided to go ahead and take my experience online. Yeah, this game is unfortunately quite dead. It's a great game to play, but for $15 and no players being online, this game dropped hardcore. I'd say if this game went free to play, it would be a bit of a niche hit for game nights with friends and such, but as of right now, it's bit of an investment to make for such a simple little game. Anyways, the game is fun. If you have the spare money or it goes on sale, do play it. It's a really fun game and I really hope for the best for Studio Klondike heading forward. Also, I'm really looking forward to Linen Partner, so if you want to give me a shout when that comes out, hit me up, devs. My DMs are always open. So far, we've had a couple of what I'd call normal-ish games. While the two had sexualized characters for sure, we've had nothing weird. These are furry games, games made by a community known for being weird. We need something that gives this video some personality, something that makes it stand out on YouTube, you know, give it some oomph! That'll do. Tribal Hunter is a side-scroller metroidvania from Melon Soda Soft. There isn't much information on the creators, but what I could find is that it's primarily made by Furfinity user Skyox, with some assistance from other people, such as Modnar Yug, I hope I'm saying that right, for animations and some sprite work. You play as Munch, a guardian summoned to help an island's bounds get restored. It's a story you've probably heard countless times before. Big Bad is doing big bad things, and you the hero need to stop it. Shenanigans ensue. I'm not gonna lie, in terms of story, writing, and characters, it's pretty basic. The story doesn't keep me wanting more, like, say, dust. The writing is good, but again, nothing stand out, and the characters are honestly just pretty generic all around. The good news is that the gameplay itself is pretty fun, but if not, a bit too difficult. The game is a beat-em-up. You have one simple combo for melee abilities and unlock more abilities over time, as is the nature of Metroidvanias. But where the fun comes in is in this game's unique mechanic, the food bar. By eating certain things, this food bar will fill up. Eat food, or the corpses of your enemies, and you get a bit of fat, as denoted by the orange bar. You can use this for your skills. Burn the fat to gain health back, and get enough fat and you can achieve a new level of weight, which makes you bigger and your attacks hit harder but slower. You can also suck in air in order to inflate yourself. It still has the weight properties of fat, but it doesn't let you use your skills, nor does it let you digest the air in order to heal. In fact, air itself dissipates faster than your normal fat does. Heck, there's even slime enemies in this game that their way of attacking is by... forcibly feeding themselves to you. You can't digest the slime, but if you have enough slime, you can spit slime enemies as a special attack and, even in some occasions, glow in the dark. Just be careful you don't fill this bar up above your max, because if you do...
This central mechanic is peak furriness. Not for the reason you suspect, but because you would never see anyone outside the furry community come up with a mechanic like this and have so much material to work off. Just go to Furfinity and search inflation and I assure you all the inspiration and regret will start rolling in. But I also feel the need to note how often you'll wind up dying. Running back from a bonfire to a platforming section with tons of enemies? Dead. Running through a gauntlet of chef enemies and slimes and get fed too much? Dead. Fighting a dragon creature with a cannon that shoots food and you need to deflect said food back at them, but as the fight goes on, the food becomes more rapidly, causing it to be harder to dodge, especially as you get bigger and bigger? Not big surprise. This game is absurdly hard. Like, for a weird and fetishy furry game that it is, I found myself actually having loads of trouble with it. This isn't the kind of game you can set in one hand while you play One Finger Death Punch with the other. What? It's a fun game. This is a game that requires your full attention. I even go so far as to call it the Dark Souls of furry games. But unlike Dark Souls, this game is so... slow. Take some damage, gotta wait for your fat to slowly digest for a tiny amount of health. No ramp up or anything. Gotta eat a bunch of enemies, gotta go one at a time since you gotta pace yourself, I guess. Died at the end of a boss fight that took five minutes because you weren't sure how it worked originally? Gotta do it all again. It's not as bad as I'm making it out to be, but I do tend to be more speed-oriented than most players. So having to sit through a solid 30 seconds of doing nothing is 30 seconds I could have spent doing literally anything else. It's why the investment in the HP on hit ability is priority one. Just a bit of advice from me personally. The visuals are also really clean and well made. I like them. And some of these character designs are really good. Even these big fish dragon enemies in the beach level are interesting with their mouth tails that vor and then inflate you. Okay, I do need to mention, yes, this is an inflation game. We got stuffing, air inflation, slime inflation, lightweight inflation. If you're wondering how I know all this, trust me, you don't want to know. I looked into dark places, and I'm telling you, you don't want to know. I mean, they literally have an entire side minigame with this puffy dragon who has you inflate and float around just to get some treasure. Not to mention you can feed enemies explosive eggs to blow them up. Not explode, just, you know. This game will get you some weird looks for playing it. I have the excuse of making a video, but if it weren't for that, I'd probably get some really weird looks playing this game. Also, the music of this game is a banger. The entire soundtrack has a unique instrumentation that I really like. It gives that more islandy feel while being a grand adventure with cute elements. I can see myself probably using some songs from this game in future clip thumbs of mine. The game is fully released on Steam right now. While the game isn't 100% bug free, the game's only $15 and even has a demo you can play through if you want to try it out. I personally highly recommend giving it a shot. It's a fun time, but it does feel rather amateurish if you ask me. Also, how can we get Pyrocynical to play this on stream? Oh fuck, oh fuck, okay. Oh, I didn't know I had that mod on. Oh, okay, it's been a good stream. Those were three furry games. Thank you for watching. And again, please go support these devs in their endeavors. If I remembered correctly, I will have a link in the description to each of these games. And if you liked the video, give it a like. If you want to see more videos of mine, I got a few, at least. And in case I go to do this video type again, why not drop a sub? It's totally free and you can unsub whenever you want. I do want to do another video covering probably another three furry games since the list I have of potential furry games keeps getting longer and longer. And if there's a furry game that you want to see me play through and get my thoughts on, please comment and tell me. Anyways, that's all for now. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you all have a good one. Peace!